Intel's new CPUs are here, and along with them are a new line of Z490 motherboards, which have a lot new about them too. So in this video, I want to explain, well, what's new about them, what you need to know, so do stick around. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So Z490 then. A quick refresher for those who don't know, the Z means that it's the higher end chipset Intel normally offers. Specifically, the, the main selling point there is that you can use one of these Z boards to overclock your unlocked CPU. So a 10900K, you can overclock that with one of these boards. The 490 is just the model number of the chipset, it's the, the most current generation, and it is the only chipset currently, like as of filming this, that you can use with these new 10th generation processors, because Intel decided that the socket they go in needs an extra 49 pins, meaning that this is now an LGA 1200 socket instead of LGA 1151. Now that does mean that 9th gen and older chips are not compatible with these new boards, and that the new 10th gen chips are not compatible with the older Z370 or Z390 motherboards. You have to stick with this Z490 board if you want any 10th gen CPU from this latest lineup. With that said, what's interesting to me specifically is that these new pins, as far as I'm aware, are currently inactive on these new chips. As I understand it, they're planning on using these extra pins to double the number of PCIe lanes, or specifically double the number of PCIe pins to be able to support Gen 4 speeds to your M.2 slots and your main sort of graphics card PCIe slots. And what that means is that these motherboards do actually support PCIe Gen 4. Now it's not the full-blown PCIe Gen 4 that you can see on AMD's X570 motherboards where everything that's connected to the CPU is connected via a PCIe Gen 4 link. Instead, the chipset is still connected via a DMI 3.0 link. Intel's effectively proprietary way of saying it's a PCIe Gen 3 link, and the, the only PCI Gen 4 compatibility you have is to the two PCI slots that go directly to your CPU, and depending on how your motherboard's configured, maybe one M.2 slot as well. Now one other thing you'll need on these new Z490 boards, or one thing to look out for, is the incredibly beefy power delivery setups. That's because if you saw my review of the 10900K, that chip draws over 200 and what, 220 watts at stock, and if you overclock it to an even modest 5.1 gigahertz all core, it was taking nearly 300 watts, and if you can cool it even more than I could, you're, you're well, well above 300 watts there, which is kind of insane for a CPU. Bearing in mind the new Threadripper 3990X, which is a 64 core, only draws about 400 watts under load, that's a pretty big deal. Now on these higher end motherboards like this MSI Z490 Ace that I'll be doing a full review of I think on Monday so make sure you're subscribed for that. Uh, this board barely breaks a sweat even while overclocking one of these chips because the VRM setup on this is pretty insane. In fact a lot of the mid to high end motherboards and when I say mid to high end I'm talking like £250 plus all have either active cooling systems on the VRMs. Uh, take a look at the uh, ASRock um, Velocita board that I'll also have a review of relatively shortly. It has three fans total. That's how much power these draw. Uh, but even on the cheapest end boards, and again, when I say cheapest, I'm talking 130 to 140 pounds is the very cheapest board you can buy. Uh, and those basically are empty barring like 12 fades VRM setups which is kind of insane. Either way, if you're planning on buying one of these new 10th gen chips, especially one of the higher end ones, make sure that you see reviews of the specific motherboard you want to buy to make sure the VRM setup can handle the power that these incredibly power hungry things draw. Now one interesting but less important change that I've seen with these boards is especially on the higher end boards that offer multi gigabit LAN, specifically normally one like, uh, single gigabit LAN and then a second multi gig port, uh, instead of the last gen ports where we saw 5 or 10 gig, we're now seeing almost exclusively across the board only 2.5 gig. Now 2.5 gig is still great, it's still more than you know 1 gig, uh, but it's not the 10 gig that we literally had as of last gen or the generation before that, and so it's, it's kind of a disappointment to see, although honestly the vast majority of people, even the ones who have these boards, aren't using them anyway, and so it's not a big deal. We are seeing Wi-Fi 6 being adopted significantly more though, 
which I know that a number of people will see some benefit from, so I guess that's a good trade-off. The main thing to note about these Z490 boards is that clearly the CPUs that go in them are not much more than placeholders. A lot of the motherboard vendors were incredibly excited to tell me that their boards do support some level of PCIe Gen 4, only to then quietly mention after the fact that they don't currently support it because there is no CPU available that you can put in that would allow you to use that functionality. It's clear that Intel have gone with a new socket here so that when they launch the next, you know, 11th gen chips, they can say, hey, look, you already have a motherboard that supports PCI Gen 4, drop in this chip and you'll get it today. Which is great, except that means that you would have to have bought this generation and then upgrade, you know, next year. So um, I'll leave that one with you. With that said, that is the, the majority of the changes that you'll see on Z490 boards. Like I said, I will have some reviews including this MSI ACE board as well as the Adrock Velocita if you're interested and maybe even some Gigabytes and uh, ASUS boards if I can get my hands on some. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. I would definitely like to hear your thoughts about the Z490 boards in the comments down below. And of course, like I said, make sure you're subscribed for those reviews as and when they come out. Now, if you'd like to check out the pricing for this board, which by the way, it's kind of insane. It's almost 400 pounds at the time of filming. Uh, then I'm gonna leave links to it, the 10900K and the Veloster board while I'm at it in the description down below. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this. Of course, because they're brand new, they might not be available there yet, so do bear with me on that. And otherwise, there's also a load of other links in the description down below if you wanna you know, support the channel and keep me making these videos. There's stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts. This, this one, if you want a uh, RTX 2060 on your t-shirt that I designed in Blender, um, or a load of other stuff. There's also a Humble Bundle for cheap games to support charities, a few different VPN options, and even Streamlabs OBS if you wanna start streaming. Otherwise, I'm going to leave some videos over there, maybe the, the 10900K review, um, as that should be out already. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, do leave those in the comments down below, but otherwise, we'll see you all in the next video.